Number 12. What is the hybridization of the central atom in each of the following? And then we have the phosphate ion, which is PO4, 3 minus. Okay. So whenever they're asking you for the hybridization, the easiest thing to do is to always draw the Lewis structure. So Lewis structures, molecular geometry, hybridization, they all go hand in hand. You can't really do hybridization unless you can see the actual molecule. And that means that we have to draw the Lewis structure. So before we even get down to what this stuff means down here, which is the hybridization part, we just have to draw the Lewis structure of PO4, 3 minus. Now there's tons of videos on this channel designated to going through each individual step of Lewis structures. This will kind of be like an overview because the new idea here is hybridization. So let's just see, does your Lewis structure match mine? Let's see. Now between phosphorus and oxygen, remember the least electronegative is in the middle. Oxygen is way more electronegative than phosphorus. So it seems like we have one phosphorus in the middle surrounded by four oxygens. So maybe I'll put the O up top here. I'll put the O down here. We have another O over here and another O over here. And maybe I'll just drop this a little down. Now I'm just being, okay, there we go. Now, draw your valence electrons. Phosphorus is in group 15 or 5A, so it has five valence electrons. So one, two, three, four, five. And each oxygen has six. So one, two, three, four, five, six. One, two, three, four, five, six, one, two, three, four, five, six, and then we'll do one, two, three, four, five, I don't know, six. So now, what does this three minus mean? Remember, the three minus means that you gained three electrons. So I usually put them in my outermost elements, right? AKA the most electronegative because they're the ones that are more likely to gain those electrons. So I'll put one on this oxygen. I'll put one on this oxygen and I'll put one on this oxygen. There's your total of three. Now let's bond them up. Do all single bonds first just to see if you have any octets. And this oxygen's all cool. This got, this has an octet. This has an octet, it's got eight electrons. This has an octet, which means that I can't touch these single bonds. But now this oxygen needs a little help. It only has two, four, five, six, seven. So it seems like we're going to make a double bond here. I'm just gonna throw that in there. And maybe I'll couple this, that goes over there. Gotta make the sound effects, right? And now, all the oxygens have the octet and the phosphorus is all good because it can have an expanded octet. Phosphorus can have a max of 10 electrons. So we're good here. So we just want to find out that hybridization of the central atom, which is the phosphorus. What kind of P is that, Christina? Okay. So I'm only looking at what phosphorus has. Now to determine the hybridization, just know that there's a max of five different hybridizations you might have to know. Your teacher or professor might even be nice and make you only memorize the first three, but sometimes we gotta memorize all five of them. But no harm, because you could always classify them as the number of letters that they have. For example, SP is just an S and a P, that's two letters. SP2, you have one S and two Ps, so that's a total of three letters. You kinda get the gist here, SP3, that's one S and three P's, so that's a total of four letters. And the number of letters always corresponds to the number of things. So if you have two letters, you got two things going on in, this, in the atom. If you got three letters, you got three things going on in the atom. But now the question is, what constitutes one thing? Well, one thing is either one single bond one whole double bond, even though there's two lines here, it's still classified as one thing. One triple bond is classified as one thing and one lone pair. So when I am looking at phosphorus, I can only see what's going on with that atom. Well, phosphorus seems like it has a single bond. That's one thing. It's got another single bond down here. That's two things. 
It's got one more single bond. We're up to three things now. And now here comes the double bond. Even though there's two lines, that's still classified as one thing. So phosphorus has a total of four things. It has no lone pairs in there. And just know I don't count any of these lone pairs because they belong to oxygen, not phosphorus, not the center atom. So four things, four letters, SP3. And that is your answer. That's the hybridization. And just know that hybridization is just telling you about the orbitals that are overlapping when you are binding with your, in this case, oxygen. So you'll have one that's an S orbital and three Ps. That's why there's a total of four. So hopefully this helped. Let me know in the comments. Thank you so much for viewing the video. And if I can, just to make this even more correct, remember when you do have charges, you just have to include them. So I just have to put like a negative three here. But that's just, you know, being nitpicky. But now we're done, all right? So thank you so much for viewing the video. Subscribe to the channel if you want to help us out. We're almost at 30,000 subscribers, and it's all because of you guys. I'm so glad that this, this channel is helping you guys learn. And not only physics, but not only physics, not only chem, but physics and math as well. So go check the channel out. Hope you're having a great day. Talk to you soon.